Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio delivered remarks this week for American Compass's inaugural Henry Clay lecture at Hillsdale College's DC campus. Um, there he argued that the 2001 decision to admit communist China into the World Trade Organization has had devastating consequences to the global free trade model that led to the United States to be a world superpower post-World War II. Rubio also lobbied instead toward reorienting the country's market economy to support working class families. He said, quote, forging a path towards a pro-American capitalism that protects our nation's interests and serves the common good will not be easy because some of the most powerful interests in our economy are deeply invested in the status quo and many of the most powerful people in our government are too deeply committed to the road we are on now. Rubio went on to say, only the free market can make this century a new American century, but it has to be a capitalism that serves the interests of our country, not the interests of the global economy, a capitalism in which the market serves our people, not in which our people serve the market. Ryan, I was actually at the speech. It was really interesting. And one of the things that stood out to me is Mark Rubio said we had gone down this path, things like the WTO, partially because we've allowed the business community in this country and people to see our purpose as human beings, as consumers. And that's a really interesting uh, comment, I think, from from a conservative and Rubio has been on this uh, track for years where he's sort of working through these things and making a case for what a lot of people would call common good capitalism. I'm curious for your perspective on what he said about how the free markets are sort of the, the way out of this uh, mess created by the free markets. What do you think about that? Well, it's interesting that it was the Henry Clay lecture because, you know, Henry Clay, you know, famously the it created what you know called the American system, which was a robust you know public investment in infrastructure, mm -hmm. in, in basically building the groundwork on which then the market would be would be able to to function. Uh, the you know that that you know he was a Whig that they became the Republican Party eventually, and for a very long time that that was something that they believed in. Uh, you know, making significant investments in people in order to make sure that the, the, the economy can work as, as well as it can. Uh, Marco Rubio is not that kind of Republican, but uh, all of these things are coalitions and people get to places for different reasons. And so, you know, if, if his protectionism, if, if his support of developing the American economy for the American people has to come through some kind of anti-communist uh, jihad that he's on, <laughs> then I, I guess I guess that's that's useful if it's going to lead to him ultimately getting to the place that he needs to be. That you can't just have the market do this. Yeah. Like if he didn't, you know, he didn't vote for the infrastructure bill. Is that, well, actually, I should check. Did he vote for the infrastructure bill? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think he did. And if, and if not, then what's your what are your politics here? Well, it's an interesting question because, yeah, you're right. The, the, Henry, the Henry Clay parallel there is very much intentional, and the infrastructure right. parallel then, given the Henry Clay context, is is interesting. But if you believe that there's sort of this this ideal of common good capitalism that is the right framework for businesses to see, then I can still understand the case for voting against the bill. He talked about how. What's the? How, what is the case? How do you? For for voting against. I mean, the, the bills bill. like. Do, he had, he had particular, cons you know, would you have particular concerns about the bill or is the idea of a major trillion dollar infrastructure bill itself counter to what he believes in? No, I think I would assume that it was more the, this particular bill itself as opposed to the sort of infrastructure things that, I mean, because Republicans were engaging in infrastructure talks that never were really grounded as seriously as they probably should have been in reality when Donald Trump was president. Um, and so I, I don't think he's opposed to the concept of, and I actually think Marco Rubio has talked about industrial policy and, and those mm -hmm. sorts of yeah, things. He has, yeah, he has, yeah. So, uh, but he, he actually made a really interesting point about how the, uh, we have now a system where companies say, because it's more efficient to manufacture this in um, Indonesia or wherever, it's going to make us more money, and thus it just must be good, right? That that in and of itself is a good. And he talks about how our sort of business community, our corporate executives, our corporate leadership in this country has this allegiance to sort of uh, the global good as opposed to the American good. And that, uh, to me, is a very interesting point because I can see how that's true from both the perspective of the right and the left in that 
American workers are paying into the taxpayer pool. They're funding the country. The country should serve them before it should serve the rest of the world. And I think the pandemic was a wake-up call for a lot of people on that, on that question, particularly when we realized that we didn't have even the basic capacity to make like masks, mm -hmm. yes, which is not a terribly complicated thing that a, de a developed country should have such a hard time putting together. But if if they couldn't figure out how to get their their you know the, the supply chains that were you know dri driven down to the thinnest reed in order, then then they then they couldn't get. And you had these you know iconic pictures of nurses going around in, in trash bags mm -hmm. and and constantly reusing PPE. And so that I think has gotten people thinking about a little bit more self-sufficiency for, for the U.S., particularly if you have set up your economy to be completely integrated with a country that you also want to have an adversarial relationship with. Yeah. It's like, hmm, I don't, know, I don't know about that. No, and to your point, Rubio floated a pretty terrifying hypothetical in the speech yesterday. He said, we still had the capability to manufacture a vaccine here on our own. Imagine if we had it. Um, so Washington Post columnist Henry Olson argued Rubio's speech also highlighted the national security threats posed by the United States's, quote, addiction to China, especially after joining WTO. He writes, these facts now give China enormous influence in the United States, the exact opposite of what advocates of China's entry into the global trading market predicted. Instead of Chinese pushing for more freedom at home, we see U.S. companies, quote, self-censor anything that would offend the Communist Party of China and lobby to lower tariffs on Chinese goods. That's another element of this that we were sort of mm -hmm. just talking about it. And you said, you know, if Marco Rubio's anti-communist jihad brings him to a good point, then so be it. And I think that may actually be the case here in that the particular benefits of this system to China and to the CCP should actually be alarming just from the perspective of, hey, they are obfuscating information about a virus that's escaping in their country. And we're like, you know, on our heels um, for months and months and have to rely on them for medications. And there's friction between the two countries because we have very different systems and concepts of freedom. Um, and so there's probably always going to be some amount of friction. We probably shouldn't be relying on them for essential goods. What do you make of that argument? Although he did pick up a, a little bit of the, the Chinese approach. Remember that bill he introduced recently where he was going to ban corporations from doing yeah. anything woke? Yeah. Did you we, like that bill or not? I liked it in the sense that it is the, it was, it's the most aggressive kind of corporate takeover mm -hmm. by the public space <laughs> yes. that I've seen in a very long time. It's like, oh. <laughs> Muscular. So, hey, okay, great. So now we're acknowledging that as a democratic society, we can, we can actually guide what companies you know, should and should not be doing. Yeah. We, are, we are indeed a, a society, a democratic one, so everybody should have input into these things. I didn't know Marco Rubio agreed with that. Well, and if you think about it, <laughs> to achieve the ends that he's talking about in the speech, you have to have more of that. There's no way around it. There's no yes, way around right, it. Right, because capital is going to look for the greatest rate of return, and so it's going to flee uh, it's going to flee developed countries in the sense that the rate of the potential rate of return is a little bit lower mm -hmm. in a in a place that has already seen significant investment. So you look for places that that still need major investment, uh, and that can be bribed and you know and arbitraged with the developed country. So right, you do need government intervention. And so if this is what it takes to bring Rubio around, okay. It might, I mean, that's, Republicans have to reckon with this if they regain power. I mean, they're thinking it through right now when they're out of power, but if they regain power, those are the sorts of bills that they're gonna have to, you know, it's it, it's sort of like an easy way to virtue signal and caring about uh, common good um, right now uh, with you know, saying you support Rubio's bill. But then when rubber meets the road and you're in power again, and on the state level where Republicans Republicans are in power in a lot of places, they're going to have to actually start thinking through these questions as like, do you actually want to vote for this? You actually want to do this? And that'll be really interesting. Sure will. Yeah. Well, we will have more rising right after this.